Turn your Bibles, Book of Luke 22. Book of Luke 22, working on a message, and hope it comes out uh, the way God wants it. And uh, it's a little different than the uh, way I've, uh, I guess, thought about before. And it's one of those, if you agree with, fine. If you don't, just love me and go on. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, it may challenge a couple of things. It may not. Uh, but uh, we, uh, whatever we do, we want to help you to make it. Every message that we preach and everything we teach, we want to help you to make it. I have no desire to hurt someone along the way to keep them from making it. I wouldn't have an enemy that I would hate bad enough that I wouldn't want to make it. I can't imagine having an enemy that you hate so much you wouldn't want them to make it. I can't imagine having an enemy that you hate so much that you wouldn't want them to make it with joy in this life also. And uh, I just want to make it and I want you to make it. Look at Luke in the 22nd chapter and beginning at verse 24. Luke 22, beginning at verse 24. This is after the Lord's Supper. Immediately after the Lord's Supper is when this is taking place. Place. Luke 22, beginning at verse 24. And there was also strife among them, which of them should be accounted the greatest. And of course, this is a disciples the Lord's gone away so now it's going to be up to them he's going away so the first thought they have in mind which one of us yeah. is going to be the greatest go. I mean after all we're we're the ones you handpicked and you're the son of God and he's telling to them the kings of the Gentile exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. But he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger. And he that is chief, as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that selleth at me, or he that serveth, is not he that selleth at me. But I am among you as he that serveth. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. And he said unto the Lord, said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. He said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before thou hast thrice denied that thou knowest me. You may be seated. We thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy, and we thank you, Lord, for your great grace and for saving our soul and making us whole. We thank you, Lord, for being so good to us. Lord, for another evening in your house, we count it a privilege. Lord God, we count it a privilege to enter those sick among us that we can call for the elder of the church and anoint them with oil, God. And we thank you for that privilege that the prayer of the, prayer of the faith may save and to heal. God, we thank you. Lord God, we thank you for all those gathered in. We don't know all the needs, but God, uh, surely there's needs in life where there be needs for strength or for repentance or for callings or challenges for growth, whatever may be the needs. God, we always have a need. So we thank you. God, so now we ask that you anoint physically. We may preach the word of God and the strength of the flesh. But above all, God, anoint spiritually. may preach thy word in the power of the spirit, tying together the loose ends and Fill the voids we leave because of our inability. Let thy word go out freely. Let it be about your name, Lord. Let it be about your name lifted up and raised up and glorified and honored. Anoint, we pray, dear Jesus. Amen and amen. From this, our verse 31 and 32, and I'll uh, 
uh, it may take a while to kind of get to that measure. We have a few points I feel the Lord wants to make and a little different than what I've, uh, I've said maybe in the past. Not different doctrine, but. And the Lord says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had desired to have you, but he may sift you as wheat. Now that is not so he could make him better. <laughs> It's a little difficult passage in one way, but we'll get to that. But I have prayed for thee, thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Immediately after that, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me that you know me. Yeah. So he knows what's going to happen in Peter's life. But he also knows that Peter, in this case, he said, when thou art converted, he didn't say if. Yeah. He knew Peter what was going to happen. He knew Peter, all the repentance and all the sorrow and all that happened. He knew Peter would have stood there and fought with him till he died if that was the case. But when he smote the servants here and the Lord simply healed the servants and told him to build them sore, he knew not what to do. There are times in my life I know not what to do. I don't know whether to grab a sword or, or not grab a sword. Hold up the shield of faith or grab a sword. Amen. So anyway, I, what we want to preach on with that, if we can get to it, is security issues. And uh, uh, actually, Carol's testimony reminded me, that gave me the message or gave me the title of Insta, but to tell you the truth, I can't remember why. <laughs> what was in your testimony that, that triggered? You might have had something to do with... Uh, what God's going to question, not because of who we are, how we dress, or, or I don't know, but something triggered the message. And I, I can't remember, sorry, but it triggered the message. And you can't hear if you're like me. <laughs> Secret, I mean, security issues. Now, God will bring judgment upon a church. Just as we, such that we find in the book of Revelation, uh, uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3, we find out where God brings judgment upon the church that have fell. He said, repent, or else I will come quickly and remove the candlestick out of, your, out of the place. Uh, and different things he says uh, to do. Uh, but when we get to the church, uh, amen, allow to see him, uh, we find this. Uh, and we find that he will no longer dwell sometimes uh, in a midst of unfaithful churches. Uh, we know we quote uh, where two or three are gathered together I'm gathered in the midst amen and we find that but he will not dwell in the midst of unfaithful faithful churches amen but we also uh, the judgment can fall and Christ will stand on the outside judgment can fall upon a church and Christ will stand on the outside and knock to see now I want you to go there just for a minute and, and I never really tell the truth I never read it like I read it this evening uh, uh, he said uh, in, in Revelation 3 and 20 and of course the Laodicean church the most famous and most well known of all the churches uh, he said this uh, behold I stand at the door and knock uh, now he didn't say if any man, he said, if any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. Yeah. And say, I will come into church. Right. I never really read it that way. I read it all my life. I read it a thousand times. I will come into him. I'm visualizing God standing at the church door, knocking, then he comes back in. Amen. But he says, if any man knock and hear my voice, open the door, I will come with him. I will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh. So we see Christ saying, look, if the church is simple, amen, but you can be a good person in the midst of a bad church. You can be a bad person in the midst of a good church. Amen. But God can come in and sup with you if you open the door. And what this one thing that means we're not going up to heaven as a group. No. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's what the Laodicean church is about. Maybe other. We're not going to heaven as a group. You can have the best church there is. Amen. You can have the finest deacons and the finest musicians and the finest preacher and the finest Christians and the finest of everything. But we're not going as a group. Amen. Oh, Homer Foster that lived many years ago and died many years ago. He would always say, in judgment, you're going to stand on your own two feet. Amen.
Amen. We're not standing as a group. We're the Reamer group. We showed up. We're the church that prays you. We're the church that continues to pray. We're the church. Amen. He doesn't send us and judge us as a group. Amen. That's right. Now, he will take away his blessings from the group. <laughs> He'll take away his blessings from the church. Uh, amen. But we're all standing. Uh, he said, if anyone will open the door, uh, I will come uh, and sup with him. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, to back that up biblically a little bit. Uh, when Stephen uh, uh, was given the message, uh, uh, Stephen uh, was preaching to the people that didn't want to hear a message. Uh, he was preaching to the people uh, that didn't want to hear anything Stephen had to say uh, about Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, when he gave uh, about the Israel man not been so bad. Uh, amen. But they looked to him uh, and God anointed him. Uh, uh, God filled him with the power of God uh, that his face became as the face of the angel. Uh, he is so full of the power of God uh, uh, that he said, I see Jesus. Uh, this is when they stop of the ears. Uh, this is when uh, they gnash you in with your teeth. Uh, this is him uh, when they threw him out uh, and was stoning him. Uh, hey, uh, he was anointed one. Uh, he is not Amen. God was with him and he with God. God will bless the individual. Amen. The group was bad, but God will bless our individuality. Right. So security issues. How secure are you? In effect, now we talk about security, we immediately think about the doctrine of eternal security. Okay. How secure are you? What's your security issues? I like what Tom said. In fact, I wrote down a, a Clarence even there. If you make, I might have to redo it. Clarence never made, I'm Clarence, God never makes you doubt your salvation. Amen. Anytime you say, I'm doubting my salvation, God is not in the business to make you doubt your salvation. That's the devil. God never makes you doubt. I believe I can stand on this word of God. God doesn't make you doubt your salvation. That's the devil. God will tell you in love to repent. Amen. So you can be saved. So you can keep saved. So you can walk with him. But God never makes you doubt your salvation. God says repent and I'll forgive. Amen. There's a world of difference between doubting and what God is doing. He said repent. And I'll forgive. Amen. Dowling if there's no solution. The devil doesn't give you a solution uh, how to get uh, from where you are as bad uh, or as dowling. Uh, he doesn't give you a solution how to get back. Uh, God never leaves you without a solution. Uh, amen. Dowling never gives you a solution. If I may say it that way, uh, dowling never gives you a solution. Uh, uh, dowling only gives you dowling. Uh, dowling only gives you discouragement. Uh, uh, dowling only makes you fail. Uh, uh, dowling only makes you go away. Uh, amen. That's all that dowling does. Uh, but what God does, I said, you sin. Yes, you have. Amen. I repent. Hey, you're drifting away. Repent. God never said, well, I didn't think you could make it anyway. God never said, you're not good anyway. Amen. God, everything he does is designed to help you to make it to heaven. God doesn't live on you doubting. Amen. Amen. He lives on you repenting. There's a world of difference. Okay. That's different. I haven't said that before. So that's brand new for me. So maybe brand new for you. <laughs> it's awful quiet, so it must be brand new. <laughs> Verses 24 and 25 through 27. Which of us going to be the greatest? I can imagine... Them feeling, boy, it's time. I mean, my fine time uh, has finally come. Uh, amen. The boss is leaving. Uh, I'm next in line for the boss's job. Uh, uh, the chief is leaving. Uh, I'm next in line for the chief's job. Uh, amen. Uh, the one above me is leaving. Uh, I'm next in line. Uh, hey, wonder which one of us will be. Uh, I bet it's going to be one of us. Uh, one of us is going to be the chief uh, of the disciples. Uh, amen. I'm next in line. Uh, and, they, and he began to talk. Uh, he said, now the Jim exercise. This is the way it works in the Gentile world. Uh, he said, but ye shall not be so. I can imagine going, <laughs> <laughs> wind kind of went out. Yeah. 
But he that is greatest among you, let him be the younger. I can imagine the one that wanted to be the chief. Amen. Had the greatest desire. Now we're dealing with people who haven't experienced grace here. We're dealing with people who doesn't have any idea what a church is going to be like. They're dealing with the people who has no idea what salvation, what forgiveness. They've never seen a world that they was about to see. Amen. Fifty days down the road. They've never experienced this world. They've never seen this world. They assume all they've ever seen, all they've ever heard, the Peter was always up here. But Jesus said now, where he is greater, he that said of me, or he that served it, he that said of me. But now the leader said, but I am among you, he that serveth. Yea, are they which have continued with me in my temptation. So he said, you got to be a servant. You shall not be so. But he that is greatest, let him be a younger. And he that is chief, it does serve. I would to God that every minister across America could understand those four verses. Amen. It would bring revival. We want revival across the land. I guarantee it would bring revival across the land. If every minister, every denomination would understand those three or four verses. Amen. Revival is not complicated. Living godly is not complicated. Amen. Having a revival break out in your house heart or break out of your church is not complicated. He said be a servant. Amen. If you're not willing to be a servant, you're direct against the word of God. Amen. Now God does not bless direct against his written word. He doesn't bless direct against his written word. So he says Satan, verse 31 32, Satan has desired to have you and actually he's speaking to all the disciples in that form of you, that he may sift you as wheat. Satan was going to bring great trials. Amen. And, and, and I don't think you want to play too much between the wheat and the chaff and all that. We know the chaff is, is always considered bad and the wheat and all that. But what he wants to do, he wants to have control. Uh, amen. Uh, and you might take, uh, if, he, if you are talking about the chaff uh, and the wheat, uh, you're talking about Peter. Uh, uh, you're talking about Satan wants the bad out of you. Uh, he wants the bad uh, to control. But the main thing, uh, he wants to control you uh, just like a puppet on a string. Uh, he wants to betray you. Uh, man to see him. He wants to be the one in control of your life. He wants to be in control of Job's life. He said, I'll make him sin. I'll make him curse you. I'll make him go against you. Because the only reason he serves you is because you blessed him on every side. You gave a hedge about him. Amen. You take down everything and he'll curse you. Go ahead, Satan. My God has so much faith in Job. He knew Job would stand no matter what. Even when he took all his health, he knew he would stand. Right. Satan always desires to sift us. I mean, he always desires to have that control. He always seeking that control. Uh, understand, uh, as I said a while back, uh, when I realized the book of Nehemiah uh, and all the attacks of the enemy, uh, everything the enemy did, I never realized until the last time I taught it uh, uh, here six or eight months ago. Uh, and many times I preached it, many times I taught it. Uh, all at once it dawned on me. Uh, everything the enemy did uh, was simply threatened. Uh, understand, uh, g Satan cannot touch you. Uh, you're on the highway way of holiness. There's no ravenous beast there. Amen. All he does is stand to the side. He threatens. He desires to sift you. He threat everything in the mind. Everything was a threat. Yeah. And he wins a lot of wars on th threats. What is that? In one of the armor it said, let him not boast that put it upon his armor, but he had taken it off. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You can really be something. What I'm going to do to you, what I'm going to do. Amen. When the battle is over, we'll see what happens. Amen. When you take off, when the armor is done, when the war is over. Amen. When my life is ended. Hey, I was and I was a long ways down the road. He's been preaching about 42, 43 years. And Richard says that sometime I says, I'm a lot closer to the other shore than the shore I left. Amen. The other shore is getting closer every day in my life. Oh, 
oh, I, I praise God. It's not what I've accomplished. Amen. Until I reach the other shore. It's when I lay down this armor. When I lay off this armor. Then can be said, amen, that he loved the Lord. In the meantime, I'm walking by faith. In the meantime, I'm walking by desire. But I haven't taken off the armor yet. I still have the help of the salvation. I still have the feet saw with the preparation of the gospel of peace. I still have my loins going about with truth. I still have the breastplate of righteousness. I still have the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. I'm a soldier in God's army. I'm going to be a soldier in God's army. I don't until the day I lay it down. You won't be able to say he has been and was and always was a soldier in God's army. But one day I'll lay it down. Amen. I pray with all my heart and I'm trying to do everything within me uh, uh, to lay it down with honor. Uh, amen. To lay it down with dignity. Uh, mm, hey, uh, uh, but he said, I pray for you uh, that thy faith fail not. Uh, I'm glad Jesus takes care of security issues. Yeah. Sometimes I think we go the opposite extremes on security of the believer. Some say if you weep wrong, you're lost. Right. Some say you do whatever you want to and you're saved. Right. We go to the extremes both ways. And I always say it this way, everything in the Bible, if you have unrepented of sin, if you have sin that you refuse to repent of, you have sin that you refuse to repent of, repent of everything in the Bible says you're living on dangerous ground. Every example in the Bible, everything in the Bible, and that says a lot because people say, what ifs? I don't deal with what ifs. Amen. But what ifs? Everything in the Bible and sin. So I say, when you have sin that you refuse to repent of, what if you are out and you sin, you die before? I say, if you have sin, you refuse to repent of. That means God told you you're wrong. That means you know you're wrong. And that means, and through pride or whatever, you refuse to repent of everything the Bible says you're living on dangerous ground. Amen. You're having some security issues there. Yeah. We all deal with security issues. We, I don't know, saying they're trying to do something on Sudden Link the other day or whatever, and they, they asked to speak to me, and he kind of foreign anyway, and there's background noise. I said, are you asking me, do I have that code or do I have, I just didn't even tell us. Anyway, finally figured out, put it on speaker, so Sandy and I both, well, you have to give, every one of us go through scary, your cell phones, I can't get in your cell phones probably. You got to lock down, you know, maybe, yeah, probably. But anyway, we have security thing. And then you'll have security codes. Uh, you've got passwords. Uh, or you, you sign up for suddenly or anything else sometimes. Uh, okay, uh, who was your boyhood best friend? Uh, or who, uh, what was your favorite dog's name? Uh, or what was the first car you drive? Uh, you had security issues. Uh, and whatever Carol said uh, reminded me of that. Uh, when I stand before God, uh, it's not about me asking. Uh, and answering uh, the first dog I owned uh, or the first car I drove. Uh, amen. Who my best friend was uh, in grade school. Uh, it's about having the blood of Jesus Christ applied to my life. Uh, amen. Uh, 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 so I deal with that. Uh, but if you want to know uh, the security, uh, class, do you believe in security of the believer? Absolutely I'm secure as I can be. Yeah. I don't doubt my salvation every day. I don't worry about you know, did I sin today and going to be lost? Where's your security issues? Turn your Bible to 2 Peter. And we know we quote this all kinds of times. 2 Peter, chapter 1, beginning at verse 3. You heard this many times, but let's go over it one more time. Beginning of verse 3 of 2 Peter chapter 1, according to his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. 
And by these you might be partaker of divine nature, right? having escaped the corruption of the world through lust. Right? Amen. Right? This is his promise. Right? He said, now you're being saved. Right? This is what you do. Right? You've escaped the corruption of the world through lust. Right? And beside this, giving all diligence. Right? If you want to check up on your security, right? giving all diligence. Right? Diligence means right? a steady, right? a steadfast, or earnest. Right? Amen. Energetic. Right? I give everything you got into it. Right? Add to your faith virtue. Uh, have you got virtue? Or have you not got virtue? Uh, amen. Add to your virtue knowledge. Uh, and to knowledge temperance. Uh, amen. Uh, and temperance patience. Uh, patience godliness. Uh, and godliness brotherly kindness. Uh, and to brotherly kindness charity. For if. Now there's an if there. That's one of 1,595 of them in the Bible. <laughs> For if. These things be in you and abound. I can see it. Amen. Don't tell me you have patience. Amen. And show me you don't. Don't tell me you have virtue and show me you don't. Don't tell me you have brotherly kindness and show me you don't. Don't tell me you have love and show me you don't. He says these things be in you and abound. Amen. They make you, you shall me neither be barren nor unfruitful. You say I can't produce fruit. Then you're not living Second Peter. The devil likes to say all kinds of things are fruit and not fruit, does all this. Neither be barren nor unfruitful, and neither Lord and Savior Jesus. He that liketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence, again, diligence, to make your calling and election sure. For if the number two of 1,595 ifs. You do these things, you shall never fall. Wow. That's what it says. That's my security. Amen. If I do these things, I'll never fall. That's not Claire Sandler. To, amen. It's not Austin or Gary or Daniel or any Richard. Amen. It's the whole, it's the Bible written. Amen. I know what works. If I do those things, I'll never fall. I'm secure in the Lord because I do those things. I tell people all the time, and we're not going through all that. I didn't look it all up because the Lord didn't want me to. But everything you look at in godly living, amen, is a Christian, everything the Bible tells you to live godly. That's right, man. Everything in the Bible. Some say any failure will keep you out. Some say no failure can keep you out. <laughs> so no place in the Bible does it tell you a sin. That's right. Let's just get to the basics. I don't argue opinions. Show me a verse where it tells you it's okay for you to sin. Show me a place in the Bible that says you sin, you don't have to worry about repentance. Every place in the Bible tells you. That's right. Amen. No place in the Bible does it say also to have no sin because we have the flesh. So you get these issues. No place in the Bible, amen. But after you live a Christian life, and when you live a Christian life like you should live, people should not be able to see sin in your life. They shouldn't hear sin in what you say. In your eyes, in their eyes, you ought to be without sin. That's obvious. You really should. You shouldn't be going places that you shouldn't go. Shouldn't be saying things you shouldn't say. Uh, shouldn't be doing things you shouldn't do. Uh, amen. Uh, there's all kinds of you in here. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've been around you some, and I don't know of things I see. I do not see sin. But you're not in perfection. All sin comes short of the glory of God. None of us qualified to be the supreme sacrifice. None of us qualified to be one without sin. Amen. We have to continuously crucify this flesh daily. We have to continuously, amen, make it to do what it's supposed to do. But we see all these things. Amen. We see all these. And a couple of things come to my mind. One, in Matthew 5 or 7, it says, Judge not, you shall be not judged. With what judge me, judge, you shall be judged. With what made you me, it shall be me to you. 
So here come some things that might be a little different. Judgment, when Christ comes back, you're either saved or you're not saved. He just came back. That was it. He says, those that be absent from body be present with the Lord. Do you think God doesn't know whether you're saved or not? He, he requires me to be to know. I has, he knows. Who you think put your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, but also, uh, you can go to a couple of different places. Uh, amen. Revelations. Uh, and also, probably uh, uh, in uh, Exodus, saying, I'll blot their name out. Yeah. Yeah. It says it. I'll blot their name out. So we got some security issues. Yeah. I'll blot your name out. Amen. I'll block your name out. But God knows what they're saved. Paul said, I caught up in the third heaven. He saw things that were unlawful to be uttered. He saw things that he didn't write about. God would not allow him to write about. He could describe heaven, amen, a lot more. And we would have more things. John the Revelator, a man saw the same thing. He heard thunder, thunder. He was going right. And the angel said, write not. John could have wrote things, amen, that described it more. And don't let any Anybody, Hollywood movie, tell you things about heaven that makes yeah. that makes me so upset. Yeah. They come out and movie a while back and they all once everybody said, Wow, heaven must be real. The movie says so. <laughs> you want to read the book, class? Say, no, I don't want to read the book. <laughs> Why don't you? You don't want to read a book about heaven? I say, I don't know a thing. All the what's in the Bible. Right. Upset some of them. <laughs> I say, I don't care what they say. That's <laughs> right. Don't make any difference. I don't care what they say, what they dream. I don't care how, how they try to make it true. In fact, all that came out as a fraud later, if you read that later. Right? Amen. Nothing is going to be said to what God has put. Get that in your head. Understand that. I don't have to see the ark to believe in the ark. Amen. I don't have to go over there and see the ark. You can take me a mile around a wreck. Well, I don't care whether I see the ark or not. I believe in the ark. Amen. I don't have to see some six-year-old tell me about heaven to believe in heaven. I don't care if you had a dream. Oh, bless your heart. I'm glad you had a dream. I'm glad you liked your dream. That's not that is what convinced me to want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven because what the Word of God said. If God did not allow Paul to riot, he's not going to allow you to riot. Is that plain enough so we won't deal with that anymore? Good. <laughs> I'm old. I get by with it, Austin. I was young. I got by with it, too. That's how you got old. Yeah. <laughs> so judge not. You should be judged. Same judge as you And I said the other day in the school class, I said, boy, I would hate to stand in some people's shoes. I also say this. I say, I really don't understand judgment. Maybe I should after preaching this law and teaching all these years. But I know what the Bible said. Paul said, as I was saying, Paul was caught up into the third heaven. He saw things in the altar, so Paul knew what happened after death. You know what Paul said about what happens after death? He said, when I'm absent here, I'm present there. That's the man that went. <laughs> That's what he said. What else did Paul say? He said, those that sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Amen. To bring with him means you were there. Amen. If I bring you with me, amen, that means you were where I was. Hey, so Paul knew what took place after death. The Bible says, John, Revelation said in the book of chapter 21, he said in about verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. So now we got a problem. We got rewards and not rewards. And I said, some people, I think they're going to get so many rewards, they got to be neck problem in heaven. I mean, their crowns going to be so heavy because they're done so good. <laughs> so you'll come before God and decide whether you're going to make it or not. We can understand that. Yeah. 
He also says the dead in Christ will rise first. Yeah. He doesn't say everybody will rise. Amen. And then we'll decide. We understand that. So God knows if you're saved. So we got some things that are going on. What about reward? What about this about judgment? What's going to be hell? You're either going to make it or you're not going to make it. We know that. Right. He says you'll inherit all things. So that's pretty good. I know I'll be happy with a thousand square foot or ten thousand square foot. Don't make any difference. <laughs> I don't know much about that either. It's, I'm going to be happy forever. And like I said, if I don't like mine, I'm just going to move in with you. You got to love me. <laughs> got to love me. You can't. You can't wish I'd go home. <laughs> I'm going to be there forever with you. <laughs> Boy, that would be disappointing. Okay. <laughs> I want to look. Mark 28, and I will give you some things that you need to think about. In Mark 10, verse 28. This is about the rich young ruler came to Jesus. He had great possessions, and he goes away very sorrowful. And God speaks about how hard it is for rich men to enter in. And it's extremely difficult because most people have to enter in because they see their need. Most people live godly because they see their need. Most people pray when they have a need. Amen. You need to pray every day when you have a need or not. Amen. You need to pray every day. You need a prayer life when you have a need or not. Whether there's disaster going on in your life or not. Amen. You still need to pray every day. Hey, but the rich, he said hard hardly. It's so hard. Amen. Because they don't have many of the things that we have to have. As I said, if you don't have any money, there's a thousand ways God's going to bless you. Your car, car battery go dead and somebody gives you a new and you're on. It's elated with the blessings of God. If you have a billion dollars in the bank, a $79 battery don't mean a whole lot to you. And only a few people, I always say it this way, can own the bread factory and still sit down. This is kind of what this means. You own the bread factory. You own Purity Made. You sit down with your evening meal, you look at that piece of bread, and you say, thank you, Lord, for that slice of bread. Amen. Now, if you haven't had bread for months, or you haven't eaten hardly anything for months, it's real easy to sit down and say, thank you, Lord, for that slice of bread. That's kind of what that means. Then Peter, in verse 28, then Peter began to say unto him, lo, we have left all and follow thee. And Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sister, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, and lands for my sake, and the gospel. He shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, and brethren, sisters, and mothers, and children, and land, with persecution, and will to come eternal life. He separated everything that he gave him to this life. Then he took one thing on eternal life. Okay, I'm going to give you something I quit. So I don't understand rewards and things so much. I know you can be no sadness in heaven. I know there's a little bit of powers of angels. You've got Gabriel and you've got Michael, there's only two, and you've got these names. And, but we also have heavenly hosts that accomplish all kinds of things. And I don't know about judgment. You shall be judged. You're going to be saved. One way you're either saved or not saved. But I begin to look at that this way and with that scripture. In this life, everybody ever seen that's judgmental never live in blessings down here. Everybody ever see that's judgmental and everybody else never live under blessings down here. Now, I believe that's a lot of what God's saying. With what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. <laughs> Gary, you and I will be happy people. <laughs> we try to just help people. Richard, you happy people. And I believe that part. Now, you can take that or not take it. Because I don't understand rewards and not rewards. I understand where some of them come on uh, because it helps explain. If you've been really bad, you get to go to heaven, you just get the less reward. And I don't buy that for a second. <laughs> But I do see everybody ever seeing in this life, I'm just speaking to the person. If you're harsh in judgment, 
it's hard to feel the blessings of God. He said, in this land you'll receive houses. He's not talking, I don't have 20 houses. <laughs> Amen. I don't have, I got one that needs a lot of work. Amen. I, I don't have all of that stuff. Amen. I, I got one car, 200 and some thousand, a truck, 189. Rusty and a, and a new car, only got 114. <laughs> it's new. <laughs> so I don't have, but you know what? Man, I'm a happy camper. <laughs> because I'm not a harsh judger. So you look at me as a happy camper. Now I'm not going to pick out somebody I ain't even think about somebody always, but I'm thinking about some people I've met in my life that nobody ever measures up to their standards. Amen. Never measure up. Amen. You know why I never see? I never see them blessed in church. I never see them smiling. I never see them happy because I think that what judgment they judge, they are being judged now. That's why I think. Something you all think on. I'm secure because. I do what the Bible tells me to do. Amen. That's my security. I know every verse in the Bible that tells you how to live, tells you to live godly. Every single one of them. And I don't have a problem with the rules of God. I like them. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you and we love you. And we pray, God, you may take the message and apply it to our hearts. Lord, that your name be lifted up and glorified. Lord, we tried our best to explain what we felt you explained to us, but if there's mistakes and fallacy, it's obviously on us. <laughs> obviously, it's not in your word. It's in our inability and our lack of knowledge. But God, we kind of think you gave it to us in a new, new way. And Lord, at least the thought, and by life, I can see it happening. So God, we thank you and we love you. But God, if there's someone here that doesn't know for sure, you're telling them to come and pray. If someone here and the devil is saying you're doubting, you're not saving, doubting without giving a, 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 a correction, a plan of action, that's the devil. That's not you. You always give a plan of action how to get back. So we thank you and we love you. In thy name we pray. Amen.